Welcome to Real Life Online, and thank you for joining us today. Real Life is a church for real people just like you, and we want you to know that God is crazy about you. Please take a moment right now and click on the share button and share this experience with your friends and family. This week, we are wrapping up our dysfunctional series with an interview between Pastor Jay and special guests, Brian and Jenea Welch. Brian Welch is the guitarist and co-founder of the rock metal band Korn, and he just released a new documentary called Loud Crazy Love, which gives an inside look into his life and his faith and how that has impacted his identity as a father. Stay tuned for this powerful interview you won't want to miss. Thanks again for joining us today. Let's get ready for Real Life Online. She's cute, huh? I have plenty of memories from when my dad was in corn. I love you, Daddy. Uh, Peekaboo. It changed my perspective on how I saw, like, love. I was just scared that I was going to screw up the kid like I was screwing up myself. I had addiction to meth methamphetamine. All the other kids had their mom and dad come to Mother's Day or Father's Day. I couldn't stop being bad to my body. I couldn't stop these addictions. <laughs> I had become an animal. I just looked up and I just said, Father, I can't pray when I'm on drugs. Do anything you want to my life. How do I pay a phone bill? How can you change so suddenly? How do I know this is real? I have to be afraid. He's like, Janae, I'm quitting corn. I'm going to stay home. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> is that even allowed? I was devastated. God's telling me to do this. And God's telling me, I'm like, that was an act of love for himself and his daughter. But I immediately started making bad choices. He had been physical, punching holes in walls. She just couldn't connect with anybody. I assumed things were going to be different. People offered her drugs. I'm like, dang it. I got physical. I flipped tables. I can't control my rage. I'm stressed out. I just wanted someone to realize I'm hurting. She says, I cut myself because of you. And I said, I hate you. I gave up everything for you. Everybody that doesn't live their life like this, that's who's crazy. Hey, would you guys please help me welcome our friends Brian and Janae Welch to Real Life. Thanks, y'all. I swear the movie has a happy ending, I promise. Promise. I know it's pretty intense, that trailer, but... Life is good. Well, it's got to have sort of a happy ending. You're here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Truth. Well, yeah. Let's, let's talk. First of all, welcome. Thank you guys for coming. Super Thank good to have you here. Thank you for having us. We're so honored to be here, and real life is like family to me, and uh, yeah. Me too. So. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? So we're, uh, we're actually wrapping up a series called Dysfunctional. So welcome. <laughs> 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 Did you start it off with your family? <laughs> and ended with yours, that's right. Okay. But Jeez. <laughs> so the, here's what's cool to me, though, because we're actually finishing up, and it was sort of like, okay, I think that God can bring function into our dysfunction as part of the amazing thing that he does. You guys have an incredible story and a movie about it. But also next weekend, we're starting a series called Miracles and how nothing is impossible and God shows up in our lives. So we can either say that you guys are ending the dysfunctional series or you're kicking off the Miracle series. It works either way, right? It's kind of a combination. I think it is. Yeah. So Tell I'm me. proud to be dysfunctional because God comes in and shows off his miracles in dysfunction. Boom. All right, let's pray. <laughs> no, so talk to me about the movie. So Loud Crazy Love, you guys put yourselves completely out there for the entire world. And how's God using that movie? It's incredible. Um, just recently I heard of uh, one of the directors that directed the movie went and passed flyers out in Dallas for the theater showing there. And um, he went to a rock concert, and there were some people out there, and he passed out a flyer to this big old guy, and the, the guy looked at it and said, can I talk to you for five minutes somewhere private? And he said, uh, no, but you can talk to me for two minutes right here. Um, and uh, the guy proceeded to break down 
and he was crying, and he said, he's thinking about ending his life. He's, he made it a point to say, I'm not a corn fan, but, <laughs> but I just thought about what if I could change my life that guy, like that, guys. And I'm having a hard time trying to figure out why you're passing, how you're passing this flyer out to me right when I'm thinking about this morning. So that was really cool. The movie played all over Australia, and this girl from uh, uh, Event Cinemas there put it in over 40 theaters. I went on a tour there. She couldn't go. She was starting college, and uh, she got, like, really rocked by God. Her name's Allison. She's my friend now, and it's really cool what God's doing. So Love it. Maybe. Super cool. And then, Jenea, so how about you? Are you hearing from... I mean, are, are young people responding to the fact, because you put yourself out there in a very vulnerable way. Sure did. It sure was, did. It was it definitely took a lot of strength. But yeah, we've seen um, lots of parents and families just um, g- learn skills and gain a lot of things from it. And um, the, the, the boarding school that I went to, Awakening Youth, they've get, been getting calls off the chain. So it's been so awesome. So people are getting help. They're coming Absolutely. forward. Absolutely. Yep, that's that's always a good thing. I saw and they the got, movie. Remember when me and you went to Fox News and I did uh, what was it? Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Remember the show? Yes, I don't remember the name. Yeah, but it was uh, Shannon, wow. Shannon, Shannon, Shannon from Fox News. Anyway, yeah, Shannon we went Bean. on there. I think she liked you, but uh, <laughs> she's married. Oh well, then she didn't like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's really cool. Actually, I saw her in Mike Huckabee. We went on the Mike Huckabee show. Oh, okay. Like a week ago, two weeks ago, and Mike Huckabee played a corn song with me. It was so sick. He plays bass. It was so good. He was like, dur, 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 dur. it was awesome. Shannon was there. I got to talk to her. All and, right. Uh, I'm having a hard time picturing that, so I think we're going to have to move on. Okay. Let's <laughs> move on. Mike Huckabee playing. But remember, corn. There, remember that night that we were there and uh, Awakening got like, yeah. like so many calls that next day and everything. And so, yeah, it's a, a lot of stuff's happening. God's using it. Well, and to get right with God, you have to get real with God. You have to, like, say, I need help, right? Isn't that sort of the first step? Yeah. So I say that every day, basically. Lord, I'm a mess. I need help right now and all day today. And then the next day, I'll be right here asking for it again. So see you. <laughs> so see you. <ya. laughs> but he loves that. I, and I think when we're prideful and self-reliant and we think we've got it all figured out, we really can't get help. But in our desperate mess, God comes to us. And that's what I loved about the movie. Had an allergic reaction to it, so I can't watch it again. Because it just, I swelled up here. I don't know if you've ever seen a movie that did that. And, uh, but it got me. And it particularly, I saw God breaking down your walls. And you were sharing. And you know, you're crying. And you know when people cry and then you cry too. So I really didn't cry. It's pretty rough. It is. But that was a powerful scene. But God penetrating those walls and, and digging stuff out. Talk about that a little bit. Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like, um, I, I mean, I, I'd been through like a like a, a good amount of childhood trauma, you know, like whatever, like mom leaving and whatever. Right. Um, and so um, I think talking about it, we spent in that, that interview during in the documentary, you'll see if, when you see the movie, um, I was 15 years old and I was in the middle of my um, my treatment, my, my program and just like. Um, feeling everything and really when when I went through that interview that's when the deep healing started because I was able to address those things and so it was very hard but the only reason I'm sharing it is so other people can um, learn and grow and get skills amen that's and I think sometimes that's the part of our story we we have to get over it's not about us I've heard you say that you know it's not about me I've got to put myself out there so other people can see Christ in me um, okay, so talk about a little bit, Janae, if you don't mind, what it was like growing up as a rock star's daughter. Was that just, that had to be perfect, right? So, yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I feel like people who look at celebrities and the, uh, people in the industry and think it's so fun and they get to do all these things and whatever, and it's just like, it's just the polar opposite. Like you're isolated. You can't trust anyone because all they want is they just want stuff from you, and it's just very hard to trust people. Um, and so growing up in that, uh, like m- my mom was out of the picture, and I was three, and I went on the road with him, and he would go tour, and uh, I slept on the bus, and um, yeah, it was it was fun. Like they took they made sure to um, have like 
give me a normal, I guess, go to the playground and hang out or whatever, but um, I don't know, some like parties and stuff, some things like I saw things that I shouldn't have or girls in the crowd or whatever, and it was just, it just opened me up to a lot of like um, sexualization, I would say, as a young age, and it was, you know, it wasn't a place for a kid, so. So, my bad. <laughs> you did, did you, he did, did listen. Just, my bad, <laughs> he hold did, on, that's, okay, go, go, go. He did, like, the absolute <laughs> best that he could to, like, make sure that I was good, but some things, yeah. it just, it was just a life, it was just So we were just, like, wild animals out in the road and everything, and, and then she was born, and so the, the first my five bad. years of her life, I was struggling with this guy that wanted to be a wild animal and a great dad, and so... By the time she hurt, she hit like five or six years old, she was coming out in the road with us. But when she was a little bit before six years old, that's when I left the band and went straight into like Jesus fanatic, you know. So she's gotten. You got the best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. The, the worst of both worlds. How you many know? parents just need to say what Brian said? My bad. <laughs> like Maybe for Father's Day, just gather your kids together and be like, my bad. <laughs> like, but I feel like there's tension there because we do try and we try the best we can, but it's not enough. I don't know that any dad feels like, man, I just nailed it. I did everything right. I provided perfectly. I was the spiritual leader. I walked into that home and they were like, there's Jesus. He's in that man right yeah. there. Like, I mean, just going to his house and everything, I thought I would see that, but I saw the, like, the opposite. I mean, he's... Oh, my gosh. You know, so he's he's... He's a failure Throwing like all of us are. You know? <laughs> Wait a minute. No, but I love what you said. Seriously, though, I love what he said. Like, he keeps... You keep You're a bigger failure? I mean, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm a bigger failure. I'm but, totally kidding. No, but uh, just about you saying, like, we're just kids that, that got old. How'd you say it? Oh, yeah. Like, that's what... We, having this understanding of our parents, because we look at our parents, we think they're perfect, we think they're awesome, and then they let us down. We see that they're human at some point, and we're like, uh-oh. But if you can just, kids right now, kids of all ages, no matter how old you are, if you can just learn to look at your parents as kids who, who are wrinkly, <laughs> right? They're just wrinkly kids. Like, they just are children who got old. Yeah. And they still have their own issues they're working out. Now they have all this pressure added to them, but they were also hurt. And people have done things to them, and they're trying to figure stuff out. And maybe life wasn't good, and they're doing the best they can. And so they just got older, but also had a bunch of pressure added to them. And if we can just look at our, our parents as children. I love it because it's so true. We just learn, like, I'm still that kid that make mistakes all the time, but I just learned, like, adult things to do, you know, like, you know, the banking and investing or whatever and, and traveling and, you know, and all that stuff. But emotionally and everything, I, I fail a lot and, and I make mistakes. So, I mean, that's all of us here, right? We can agree For to real? that. Compared to God, we're definitely like yep. kids. And that's why in the Bible, he calls us children a lot. You know, mm. it's like we're children of God. Why are you calling a grown man or a grown woman a child of God? Because compared to him, that's what we are. And he's our perfect. That's right. That's so good. And, and that Jesus chose to reveal God as a dad, as our heavenly father. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, okay, so you grow up in the dysfunction of rock and roll. But then I would say that you also had a little trauma from radical conversion. Was there anything, I mean, was that a little bit wild? Your dad goes from... Because you're pretty extreme. So I guess if you're going to do anything, it's going to be like, woohoo, I'm going to yeah. get baptized in the Jordan. Woohoo. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it was. Woohoo. It's like, you know, the heart was right, though. And then, sorry, I don't want to interrupt if he was asking you, but I was like, I was, to me, I, I had good motives because it was like, I'm going to go 100% in the flesh, in the drugs before I did it all. 100% rock and roll, drugs, all that stuff. And then I'm like, so Jesus is going to get like 10%? Oh, Jesus, take my drugs away. And then, and then I'm just going to be like, you know, complacent or whatever. No, I'm going to go 100% for Christ. And I still do to this day, but I got a little bit nuts with it at first. And unfortunately, she saw and experience some of the like just fanaticism of well, let's, just religion yeah, let's talk and stuff about like a little that. bit of that because you're a young Christian and you're just trying to find your way and go all in. But like, because I think a lot of children grow up in homes that are dysfunctional on the one end, but then also maybe spiritually dysfunctional. And so just I know you can share a little bit about that been through it all, man. Yeah, I've definitely seen both sides. Um, 
I, I was raised being like, I guess like a rock star's daughter, blah, 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 whatever. And then also like a pastor's kid. So it was just, I saw the pros and cons of both sides. And mm. so when, um, when he found God, it was pretty radical. And like we, he, we like moved out of town and moved to Phoenix, Arizona. And um, I was just like seven. So Is I was Is that just, where you move when you get, want to get right with God? Is it Phoenix? Yeah, you go to the That's desert. That's the place. That makes sense. See? Okay. Desert. You go right to the desert. That's what Paul did. That's <laughs> biblical. That's what Jesus did, you know, before his public ministry. Okay, there you go. Some of you are like, move to desert. Step one. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, so I was just a kid. When you're that little, you kind of just go with it, and you just ex- take it all in because it's the first time you're experiencing things. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I saw uh, he was going through a lot of healing, even just like as a kid, like self-hate, those things that were rooted. And then also, I mean, I assume withdrawals and whatever and just dealing with um, personal things and working th- them out with him and God. And I, he just happened to have a kid like watching TV in the next room, you know, and so it, it would he would get angry and whatever and just kind of like deal it, you know, deal with it. And then I would be like, OK, I'm taking her to rock concerts. She's seen all this stuff, you know, I'm trying to keep her away from the adult stuff, but some things slip through the cracks. Then I find Jesus, I leave the band, and I'm like, you can't watch that show because there's a witch on that, even though it's a Disney show. But I'm like, and then I'm the extreme the other way. And so the poor kid is trying to, like, you know, figure it out. And, I, you know, I meant, I meant well, but to my mind then was like, I'm going to keep all evil away from us because I got away from all the bad stuff. And so... Oh, evil's going to try to sneak through a Disney show with a witch, you know, and, and you know what I'm he saying? Was doing, I was just no, like, I do know what you're saying. I was paranoid, man. I was paranoid. And I know a lot, some of you people have been in church for decades and did the same thing, you know. It's just like, Absolutely. you kind of get a little crazy with it, and it's like, come on, just get, like, to get to reality here, you know. Well, sometimes it's the spirit of religion rather than a relationship with Christ. Ooh. Right? That's it. And because Mic drop. <laughs> And so instead of growing in a real relationship with Christ, we get this spirit of religion and we build lots of walls rather than bridges, you know, to the world and to go and make disciples. It's kind of like, no, I'm just going to stay here and everything stay out. And, and, and maybe we need that for a season sometimes to protect ourselves. But here's what I think sometimes happens, and this is what I need for you to speak to, Jenea, is that maybe we grow up in a home where our parents are Christian and we go to church, but then we also see things that don't necessarily measure up to the life or the word of God. And I think that can cause resentment, right? Kids will see like, oh, you're supposed to be this Christian, but you have anger issues. And I mean, you saw your dad struggling in that season. Yeah, um, him him struggling. And then also, um, I mean, I guess he he got involved with some uh, Christian partners, some business partners, and they ended up being phony and then like having them sign all this stuff and then they dipped out and it was just I was just watching this all unfold at I'm like 11 years old when it when he has to file for bankruptcy and I'm like okay so I we left our family and our friends to move to the desert to follow God and then all of this pretty horrible things are happening like so this is God this is what God led us to mm. like what's the this is rough. Like, I don't really know if I want a part of this. You know, I but love it. At the same old. time, in the in the midst of it, I'm like probably giving her too much information. You know, she's hearing me on the phone. Like, what do you mean? I, she did say know. she was 11. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of kids at 11 are watching Care Bears. Yeah. Well, you know what? Maybe not Care Bears. I, I don't know. Not Dora. Care Bears. No, not Dora. I forget. SpongeBob. <laughs> so good. SpongeBob. Well, you SpongeBob. know what though? A what, little edgy. You know what's an, an interesting dynamic between, like, father-daughter is that the mom isn't there. Like, the right. wife role isn't there. So in some circumstances, I had to step up in that so he could – there was no one else he could confide in, confide right. in. You know what I mean? Yep. And so sometimes he would – I feel like a lot of, like, single parents and uh, kids feel like that. Um, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm, like, trying to teach her spiritual things too. So she's like, are we going to be okay because I hear – you know, I'm on the phone going, what do you mean we're going to lose our house? You know, and Daddy, we're going to be okay. I'm like, you know, showing her, well, God's going to provide for us. Don't worry. You know, he promises. And meanwhile, I'm like believing it, but fearful too at the same time yeah. because I'm watching my house go away. But, you know, uh, so a lot of things like when in the movie I talk about, there was a time where I lost everything. And 
we played a game about looking for quarters. I go, you go in your room and look for quarters in your drawers, and I'll go in the kitchen and to my bedroom, and whoever has the most quarters wins, and that was going to buy her lunch that week. And so, and That's I could, real. I had family I could call, but I was, you know, I was embarrassed. And so, but, so I was teaching her, God's going to show us. And then, sure enough, that week I got a check, a big check that I didn't, it wasn't coming. It wasn't expected. Yeah. The manager found some money that was mine that was tied up. So she wow. she got too much info at too young of an age. But, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm a failure a lot. But, you know, I try I my best. But I'm a lot failures. better now. It's, you, that was years ago. So. Yeah, you did, you did the absolute best you did. Man. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> love you. <laughs> I love it. Part of the reason you're here is because God has done some miracles. He's restored you and your relationship is precious. And you guys travel together and you go like vacation together. And I've seen you guys a lot. And I think there's probably been moments where you've had to just, God's had to help you forgive and make peace. And I see a lot of people not doing that. Like they hold their parents in contempt because they did something wrong. And then the, it's just, they can't move past that. And as a young adult, you're 21, right? 21, July 6th. Boom, it's coming. All right. So, yeah. yeah. So as a young adult, how did you as a young person, make peace with some of the things that happened in your past and forgive your dad or just show grace? Um, it took a lot of um, maturity, honestly. I mean, it's, it's, some people don't forgive their parents until they're way older, but um, for me, it was um, learning selflessness and also uh, um, a lot of counseling. Um, I went through years of just um, counseling in my program and just learning why I felt certain ways and understanding this, the situation um, throughout uh, my um, ages. I guess yeah. when I was 15, 16, I didn't quite get it. But 17, 18, I was like, oh, I'm almost an adult. Oh, he was that old when that happened. Oh, okay. He was just, he was so young. He didn't know any better, you know. Mm. Um, and so I think it took a long process. And I think forgiveness um, comes in layers, really. But the number one thing for me was knowing that my mom and my dad did, did the absolute best that they could. You know what I mean? That what they were capable of, they did the absolute best they could. And that was, you know, that was enough. And that do, and their mistakes don't define me as a, as a human being. Mm, you know, I, I, I make my own path. And that God is, helps. That's really good. Yes, 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 yes. And I think, you know, no one has a child and holds the baby and looks at them and feels like, you know, oh, I'll, try, I'll give him, you know, I'll try. You know, it's like our desire is to be the best parents. Even like the most flawed people hold, hold their baby and like they want to give them the world. Mm. And so just think about that with your parents, you know, it's just, we're just broken, man. And, and some people are way more broken than others. And she, she even says like, she forgave her mom. Her mom left her at an early age, but she's like, she 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 did her best she could too but she's just too broken to to she just didn't get it healed and like some people do you know and so that's a big step just knowing that people are broken and and knowing yep. that their desire was to be like the best parent they could showing grace to parents is just a big thing again just look at your parents and go big kids wrinkly kid trying you know <laughs> and just love them and and accept because also while they had a part to play in getting you where you are God is the one who's going to get you where you're going to go. And he takes us where we are, meets us there, and says, let's go from here. Because the story of all of our lives is his grace, and it's for his glory. So, okay, I want to talk a little bit, because you're so vulnerable in the movie, which I know had to be hard. But self-hate, self-harm, like there was a lot of that. And that's so prevalent in this generation. And I feel like God's given you a voice and a courage to speak to it. Yeah, that's m honestly my number one passion is just young people and teenagers dealing with um, uh, depression, suicidal thoughts, self-harm. Um, when I was, um, I'd say when I hit middle school, um, all of the, the things I went through as a kid, I started to feel them. Instead of just experiencing them mm -hmm. as a little kid, I started to realize that they hurt. And so, um, I don't know, I met some uh, girls in my school who, like, um, self-harm. They would, like, um, cut with, like, razors or, like, burn themselves with lighters or whatever. Just, just to, I don't know, just to feel something, you know. Th they didn't have the voice to um, share that mm -hmm. they were hurting. So that was um, a way to say that they were hurting. And so I, I kind of thought that was, like, edgy and cool. And, like, I didn't know how to voice myself either. And so, um, and I noticed that those girls got a lot more attention 
than the, the kids who were like good and did good in school and were doing okay. So I just, I don't know, I thought that was a way that I could be like, hey, I'm hurting, like look at me, like I, I'm hurting. And so, yeah, it's very prevalent. And with both parents at work and just like the, the early uh, child development, um, that just isn't prevalent when the kids are working, it's, or when, sorry, when the parents are working, it's just, um, that's, and with social media, it's just very hard. It's very So difficult. what would you say to kids who are dealing with that and their emotions are finally catching up to their experiences and they don't know how to handle it? Um, well, when you're a teenager, feelings are so overwhelming. You guys know it's just so, um, uh, yeah, just overwhelming. I would just say that um, you're worth fighting for. I would say that, um, yeah, you're, you add substance and beauty to the world and you don't have to um, take extreme measures to tell people that you need help. You know what I mean? There, there are healthy ways to receive help and, and love yourself and learn to um, receive joy and true, um, yeah. So reach out, though. Let somebody know, right? Yeah. Um, I think the number one for me uh, that helped me was, yeah, just reaching out and talking about it to people who really care about you. Yeah. And um, family isn't always blood deep. You know, and so um, reaching hmm. out to people who just care about you, even whether, uh, whether it's a friend or an aunt or your mom or dad, um, just saying that you're hurting and asking for help. And um, sometimes when you don't want to get up in the morning, look for a passion, look, you know, like, and if hmm. you can't find a passion within yourself, follow someone who does. Like even Pastor Justin, like he has a passion for ministry and people and the church. And so follow him until you find your own. Okay. Those two things. Okay. I like it. Um, and yeah. I just want to add that the easiest thing to do, like sometimes what looks easier is to go medicate. You know, teenagers get into the wrong stuff and they just, you know, follow the crowd and everything. Something needs to rise up in these kids in this generation to like do something that's maybe harder, which is to work on your stuff so that when you are out of school, which will be a blink of an eye. Time goes by so fast. You'll be ahead of the game because you're talking, you're communicating your emotions. You're getting in and you're, 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 you're seeing a counselor or following someone like Justin. Well, maybe not Justin, but someone else that good in this church. But, um, but, uh, but you know what I'm saying? Just get ahead of the game, kids. Like, like don't go and fall in the traps and self-medicate and do all that stuff. Talk about your issues so that you'll be ahead of the game. When you graduate, you're not going to be emotionally stunted growth you know you're going to be ahead of the game yep. and more advanced and your future will be brighter so that's just my god has plans for you for yes. sure yes yes okay so well i just think about like when jesus heals us right i you know he would cast out demons and it's always loud and messy the demons would shriek as they leave and so sometimes we experience this mess right like the demons would, would shriek, it's messy, it's loud, and that happens, and that was your life. Well, loud, crazy love, right? And, and so, but we're in process with God, and we're never really there, but we're, we're trying. But what are some of these spiritual disciplines? The, the miracles, always there's God's part, but then there's our part. What are some of the things that you feel like you had to do to experience God's power and his mir miraculous love in your life? Well, the good thing for me is, like, I, was, I had a hunger for it. Like I said, like I felt that I love from another dimension. I felt Christ's love. And I was like, wait, I want that. Hmm. I don't want to chase a high that is making me feel like I want to kill myself. You know, the alcohol that make, I wake up sick every day. I want this feeling that I felt when I prayed to God. And it, it wasn't instant. It took like a couple of weeks or whatever. But I felt this you know, that the love of God, it says, is poured out by the Spirit into right. our hearts. I felt that, and I was instantly addicted. And so my disciplines <laughs> were like, you know, I walked away from the band. I wanted to be a good father. I, I, uh, I went to church, and I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, church was cool on Sunday. Now what do we do on Monday? <laughs> what, they're closed? Okay, well, I'm going <laughs> to let I, I learned to worship God by myself, and I listened to messages by myself, and I, I devoured the Bible, not you know, I just, you got to learn the word. That word has to get in you. And um, like the New Testament is so important. And I read it over and over again until, you know, God, it says God's, uh, his eyes roam around the earth looking for a heart that's completely his. Mm. And once you don't quit, when he sees like a person that does not quit, he starts to unveil mysteries that are so like 
ancient and so like wonderful that it's there's nothing like it on the planet. And so that's what that's what I did. That was a long answer, but <laughs> it was, that was my spiritual discipline. It's just going after everything that he had to offer. Nice. Have you anything that's helped you get right with God, get closer to God? Um, it's it, I think that that phrase is so funny because I feel like, uh, kids who have been raised in church, like um, a lot of it becomes stale and watered down in your heart, you know. And so it's mm. like get right with God. It's like when you're when you're like a pastor's kid, it's like ugh, like what? Like that's my whole life. <laughs> and so, um, but I think. Getting right with God means getting real with him, you know, and, like, asking questions and mm -hmm. inv and tr almost invite, yeah, inviting him in. And he was so gracious to me that he put me in a place in the, in the program, but a place where I had his, or, yeah, he, I had his fully undivided attention, you know, because mm -hmm. I, um, I didn't have my phone and I was, um, with it, it, almost like a, like a monastery type, uh, thing. And so, um, yeah, he just, he was so Do kind. Do you think that's important? Like for people to be able to get alone and hear from God and cut themselves 100%. off a little bit from the noise? hundred percent. That it saved my life, honestly. Um, and, and he, in doing that, he gave me a hunger for him, you know, instead yep. of he tried everything and blah, blah, blah. And so not blah, 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 sorry. He tried everything and he, <laughs> and he searched for it. I, he brought that hunger to me again so we nice. could have a mutual relationship. Love it. And she's 20 years old. So she's still going, she's still figuring it out, you know, just like I'm, I am at my age, but she's 20, you know, and she's so far along. I'm really proud of you. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. What a good Father's Day message. Speaking of age, you got a birthday this week. Yup, 49, big 4-9. What, what? 49. Yup. And it's then uh, we're, our new band, Wrinkly Kids, is, uh, we're going to release an album <laughs> next month. Uh, Wrinkly. Band name called it. Oh, I, no, I just did. No, you didn't call it, though. Wrinkly Kids. We are the Wrinkly Kids. That's what every, every time I have a band name, and you have to say we are the, you know, like you're in front of the crowd. Yeah, and we, just, are the we are the wrinkly kids. <laughs> and nobody wants to come to our shows. Jeez. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but my gosh. I think that is one of the themes, though, for this Father's Day is just that, hey, we're all kids that got older. And as we get older, though, we don't have to get, uh, I mean, as we get older, we can get closer to God. Because outwardly, we're wasting away, the Bible says, but inwardly, we're being renewed day by day or be made young talk to me yeah and at one translation yeah yeah it's just like you can translate that it's like you're getting i'm getting younger and younger that you know that as my outward body is wasting away that's kind of sad but uh, <laughs> but uh you know what i'm saying renewed day by day renewed i'm getting renewed and so i have a i have like a childlike joy that just won't go away yeah it doesn't go away you know a lot of people that don't have this can get, they'll get older and they get more grumpy and they get oh did you see what Trump did today I'm sure we I can't hear you know what I'm saying it's like <laughs> what's a good... what, what's the point of that you argue you argue about politics and then you and then you're getting ready to probably go pass away in the next you know a couple decades or something it's like I want to find joy man I don't want to fight I right. want this joy that's like Shoot eternal that. you know what I'm saying say that. What would you say, like, as we kind of wind down, just speaking to somebody maybe who's on the other side of the hope that you found in Christ? Because he's restored your life. He's restored your relationship. He's using you also. So you're actually being used by God to change other people's lives. But there are people who are on the side of this story where you were. Mm -hmm. and, and what would you say to them? You know, they're stuck in their dysfunction or their pain or their addiction. Um, I mean, I would just say... Like I said before, like you, you're worth fighting for. Don't give up on yourself and your relationships, you know. And even if you have to cut unhealthy people off, God will use mm. every person's every person's mistakes that they've caused you pain. He will turn. He will heal you and turn them around, so you will learn and be able to help other people. That's good. Yep, that's real. And not trying to plug the movie, but check the movie out. It comes out um, this Tuesday, actually. And watch our story, man. It's, good. it's available on 100%. Amazon, iTunes, and all that, and DVD. But watch our story because it is proof that no matter how 
bad of a place you're in, it's not where you're going to stay. It's not where you're going to stay. God is, is, a, is a God who resurrects uh, from the dead. Jesus is the proof of that. And now he resurrects things in our lives to show that he's real and active and alive and still someone that raises from the dead. And That's so right. he's raised our life from the dead. He's going to raise your bad circumstances and bring life to them. And so, yeah, never give up. Just Dude, ever, yep, ever give up. Preach. That's what I always felt like uh, my story. I'm a poster child for grace. You know, like I'm that one of those people that God just said, hey, watch this. Look at that guy. He's a mess. But I'm going to stick him on my billboard. So I'm, I'm a grace poster child. Like, like if God can change me. And then I looked over on my billboard and yours is up a little higher. <laughs> it's like, man. you are, you guys are, you're poster children for grace. Oh, God loves failures, man. He's like, he loves failure. He's like. Just watch what I can do with this failure, you know? And it's like, he's like, he's not a failure to me because, yeah. you know? 100%. That's, that's hot. I love that so much. God loves failures because a, a lot of times we're trying to be good and we're trying to be perfect to get ourselves in a position where we feel worthy of God's love. And he, he finds us and he runs to us while we're still a long way off. And he carries us home. And, and that's the love of the Father that Jesus tells us in the, in the parable. And, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so I, I love that the heart that you guys have, and I love the story that you're willing to share because it's changing lives. And so thank you so much. Will you guys just show some love and, and support for Brian and Jenea? Thank you, Real Life. Thank you so much. We love you. Thank you, guys. Mm. A lot of truth, a lot of good stuff. And you can just stay standing because I'm, I'm going to pray for us. And then I'm going to give us an opportunity to just spend a couple minutes in worship, just singing to the Lord and thanking him for what he's done. But let's just talk to God right now. Thank you, God, for who you are and for what you've done. I want to thank you that you sent your one and only son because you so loved us that if we believe and put our faith in Jesus, we don't have to just die, but we'll have everlasting life in him. Thank you, God, for this promise, for this truth, for this reality as it's unfolding in so many of our lives right now. And for those who are still just a step away from you, God, I pray that you would give them the courage to take that step, to draw near to you because you want to draw near to them. And in this moment, just be glorified as our, our perfect dad who loves us. We just want to sing to you and thank you for your love in Jesus' name. Amen. What an awesome interview between Pastor Justin and Brian and Jania Welch. If you have any questions or in need of prayer, we would love to hear from you. Please go to real.life slash connect and someone will reach out to you soon. Also, if you would like to stay up to date with what God is doing here at Real Life and always be in the know when we go live, subscribe to our YouTube channel now and follow us on Facebook. You can always check us out online at real.life. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us today and remember, God's crazy about you.